I was thinking the other day that some of the everyday words that we use when it comes to time is actually very negative. Have you noticed? We say, time is passing me by. I'm not getting any younger. I don't have enough time. Time waits for no man. The clock is ticking, tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> All of it just breeds fear and anxiety. There's never enough time. All these words are telling us that we are indeed missing out on something, that there's something that we're supposed to be doing and somehow we haven't quite accomplished it yet and that time is running out. But what is that thing that we're trying to accomplish and what is time in relation to that thing that we're looking for? Are we just wasting time? I thought about it and I realized that, well, it's because we haven't quite mastered the concept of eternity and how it relates to us, us, the spirit. We see ourselves as the experiences of this physical body. It's like someone experiencing a midlife crisis at age 45 and they look back on their lives and say, ah, I've lived half my lifetime already and there's nothing to show for it. It feels as if something is missing and they don't feel quite accomplished yet. But what we call time in our world has very serious limitations. In fact, it breeds fear and inner turmoil when you think time is against you. And that is because you still see yourself as just this. Yes, you checked in here for a quick pit stop. You got gifted this amazing body and it's doing well. And because you've been living in it for a while, you forget that, yes, you will check out just as fast. Total number of experiences had maybe 80 to 90 years if you're lucky. So what? The body gets buried in the ground. The soul moves on. So what? Are you finished? Are you quite done? Why the panic? Oh, time is against me. How? Imagine going to a buffet where they're serving some of the best meals you've ever tasted. And then they tell you, you see this buffet? It's always here. It's always available all day, every day. It goes on forever. But for today only though, it's between 10 and 12 p.m. And today you're starving. Now you suddenly forget that they said it's always there. But because you're so hungry, you only look at the clock and you remember the timings they told you, 10 to 12 p.m. Ah, I better start eating. Now you tell me, how can you really enjoy today's buffet compared to if you knew and remembered that it's always open with no time restraint. In fact, every time you go to fill up your plate, you're going to be looking at the clock. Ah, I haven't eaten enough. <laughs> I've only eaten, so I can only eat so much. I haven't even tasted dessert. And it's already 11 o'clock. Ah, I haven't had wine. Where's the wine? <laughs> Stop panicking. How can you enjoy that buffet? It's not the time and quantity that you eat. It's the quality and the satisfaction from every taste. That is what life is. You see, the concept of time in our world actually limits the experience of the moments that we are having. So we can't even relax and just enjoy the experience. We think, oh no, I'm missing out. If I don't do this, that one will suffer. The question is, life is to be enjoyed. Are you enjoying yourself? Is it fulfilling for you? Or are you just selfishly fighting with life, running around looking for what you want? What if I told you that you could ignore your earthly idea of time and just focus on enjoying the buffet, on savoring every taste when it presents itself to you, finding out the ones that you like and even the ones that you don't like, so you just spit it out. <laughs> I don't like that one. Let me try that colorful cake over there instead and bring champagne while you're at it. <laughs> Are you enjoying your moment here? That's what matters. Wouldn't you feel better not being rushed and panicked by steadily enjoying each plate of experience as it comes? The enlightened ones, they call it living in the eternal now. No time constraint, no rush, rush, no gra gra. No pushing others out of the way so you can get to where you're going. Even when the physical body has been put to rest, the buffet continues. In fact, it's now even more colorful, more vibrant and more tasty. 
So why the panic? You have to live in the eternal. You don't have limited number of days. Your life is eternal. Your lifetime has no time, at least not in the way that you think of it in an earthly sense. So begin to see yourself as eternal and only your experiences in this body as limited or timed. If you're still so fixated on 10 to 12 p.m. buffet, you won't enjoy your meal. You have to see your life as a perfectly prepared table with unlimited abundance and unending perpetual consciousness. It's not bound by birth or death or fear or sorrow or pain or strife or realities and dimensions. It's ever conscious, ever aware. Then you can pick and choose from that buffet table which your creator has graciously set for you to enjoy it in love and appreciation without the need to gobble it up or trample over others to eat. The only time that should matter to you is eternity, eternal time. And whether you get to taste it as a fully conscious human spirit or not, only when you cease to be conscious of your own existence, that's when you have wasted your lifetime. Think of yourself as an aged wine. You won't rush to drink it all at once. You'll appreciate every sip and with every experience, you taste better and better, more refined, more mature, more alive. That's the fine wine that I want to be. So what is time really? It doesn't matter. What your ego is calling a thousand years here on this earth, in other planes of existence is a day. So which clock are they using? Let's stop panicking about time. Let's enjoy the buffet. Let's enjoy every moment with the concept of eternity as our ultimate goal. So until next time, be gentle with yourself. At least you've got time to do that. <laughs> Bye for now.